Hi guys and welcome to another Unity Devcast. Today I'm going to introduce a new tool that I've been working on. Uh, it's something maybe you already saw. I presented uh, at least a sneak peek of it, how it um, how it works. But it uh, completely it was completely refactored and actually redesigned from from UX UI standpoint, but as well as as the nitty gritty of the rendering. I actually combined my voxel instancing and uh, this prefab painter. So uh, let's uh, dive right into it. Uh, it can be standardly uh, enabled using a tool, then it's uh, using a menu, then there is this uh, a quick tool that you can access the various, uh, various paint brushes or paint tools. Uh, and you can also uh, access the settings and when if you change the uh, change the tool it will change the settings in the and the editor uh, this this UI will definitely change I will also, also add shortcuts there will be different um, approaches to, to this uh, to this UI as well uh, I am open to any feedback so if you had something like this tool in your arsenal how would you use it and what would you actually actually change and uh, so on so let, let me delete this one so let's say you want to, to paint uh, something I have a, I actually have a old uh, game object with, with the old, old controller but anyway uh, so let's paint uh, our our prefabs uh, the first tool is paint tool what you can do is obviously set the brush size Uh, then you can set the density because this supports uh, multiple instances in one stroke obviously so if you want to paint let's say five trees you can do five then there is a minimal distance between these um, between these instances so if you if you for example have a, a huge density on a small brush size uh, it will not uh, be able to do all the instances because there will be the minimal distance will will not work obviously but you can uh, fit this to, to your needs these uh, sliders and so on will also need to be uh, refactored to, to your needs because there are some arbitrary values you will be able to set minimum and maximum to your liking in, in later uh, later releases and then there is a maximum slope that you can you can paint on so what slope is slope is basically how how steep this is so if you for example don't want to paint on these uh, really steep uh, really steep slopes you can uh, set the slope to to some kind of maximum uh, to help you with it then there are the definitions uh, for the for the prefabs you are painting and uh, you can see that there are actually two trees we are we are going to paint in in a single stroke uh, and uh, there is a probability of the first instance is one probability of the second uh, being spawned is one so with the probability will be 50 50 percent this probability can be set so for example you are painting some kind of uh, forest and you want the, these trees to be really rare you set the probability to be way less than the probability of the other trees then there is a minimum scale of this instance maximum scale it should rotate to normal because you have a terrain a tree is ob obviously sometimes they rotate to normal but uh, let's disable it because you want them to just point uh, point up uh, but since we are going to paint uh, on the plane anyway so uh, you, let's say to rotate to normal and there is the there is additional offsets you want to use uh, as you can see we are using the uh, rotation offset here because our instances are actually rotated by x axis on the 90 percent so if we didn't have the uh, have this offset there the, the trees would be <laughs> rotated to the and they would basically lay on the ground if you want to spawn some trees that are lay on the ground you can again use this rotation offset no problem and you, then you can add multiple uh, multiple prefab definitions if you want to spawn two trees, three, three threes, and so on. So let's say we introduce this uh, tool. So let's paint it up. And now you can paint some uh, kind of forest. And as you can see, 
uh, there are no uh, no prefabs spawned. Uh, that's how the prefab painter that I introduced um, earlier that I actually showed on my LinkedIn and, and so on worked. This actually works. The, it only spawns basically a matrix uh, instances uh with the mesh data and then the, it, there is this uh, indirect instancing used that's similar to what i use in my in my voxel demos but uh, it's a it's a bit a bit simplified down because in in the voxel demo i have a lot of optimization stuff that's not really good for uh, generic usage and there is also the culling that i'm not doing any culling uh here but uh, i may add it later so let's uh, see what what this spawned, it spawned uh, the prefab painted object. You can uh, set this to be a specific object you want to. And if, the, if this is not set, the prefab uh, painter tool will automatically spawn a new object and call it prefab painted. And then it will uh, create some uh, components. These components are basically what does the rendering, the instance rendering. And as you can see, uh, there is some data that sh shouldn't be visible and it will be editor only only data but basically uh, there is this mesh uh, and if i if i change this uh, this mesh i i will be able to actually uh, render different uh, different uh, different stuff <laughs> as you can see so we painted a tree you can change this mesh anytime the instancing will work and uh, it will it will spawn the different um, uh, different mesh but let's uh, let's change it to the to the original original prefab that we uh, original mesh that we used so uh, it's spawning those and there is also uh, instance material. This material will be automatically filled for you if there is no material detected. And it, it is a simplified instance indirect material that I created for again for my voxel demo. But now I'm I'm reusing it here, so it, it supports a bunch of bunch of stuff like shadow shadow casting, single uh, single light, and so on. So it's basically tailored for our needs in our our Pixel Federation games, but you can you can do whatever and uh, the as you can see there are two uh, components uh, because there are two meshes and each of them will be will render uh, the, using the instance so these are these are basically two draw calls with with the 3g mesh and 3a mesh and uh, you may ask why i didn't do it in a single component i could do it in a single component and i may later change it to a single component usage so with, with the different renderers because there is not, nothing blocking me from using a single component to render two draw calls with different meshes and again instances but i i found this uh, really uh, really clear for example if i if i if this second tree had, had a different uh, material i would use i would simply drag and drop the different material here and so on so this is a distinct decoupling of the of the rendering of the two different meshes and i i kind of like it uh, like it like it is here but again uh, depends on the feedback and so on on the usage uh, you can you can uh, i can i can put it together and so on uh i'm kind of uh, kind of dizzy at the moment because i, I played the lost arc for uh, for last a, a lot of hours as you can see there is an icon here because <laughs> because i needed to hit the level 50 that's a <laughs> uh, because i'm a avid gamer <laughs> and i like to play uh fancy diablo mmos so uh that's <laughs> that's a bit of a, a different topic though so what you can do uh is obviously you can erase the instances as well this tool is pretty pretty simple uh it just has a brush size and then you can modify modify is uh, is, a, is a different tool that i'm i'm still working on but uh it already supports a lot a lot of features first modif modify is that if, if i just uh paint through these instances all of them will be modified once by by this so we just paint like here you can see that these instances that i paint over uh, were modified uh, by this uh, by this value but there are different modes to this tool uh, additional node is that i can modify position so i can basically using shift 
I'm holding shift I can change this uh, the position of these instances that I'm grabbing and there is an advanced tool as well when I'm uh, uh, holding control so I can scale them I can rotate them and so on so I will probably disallow the negative scales. Let me know if you if, if that's something you you need. But as you can see, this tool works like this. So let me jump to the paint tool uh, because this advanced uh, stuff works for, uh, directly in paint tool as well. So if I just uh, hold my control, I can automatically add the new instances and rotate them and scale them and so on so uh, that's uh, simply it when it comes to the first version of this tool uh, let me know what do you think oh there is one more thing that I that I actually added uh, and that is uh, generating the game objects if you want to so we can basically generate these prefabs and as a game object so let me show you I I have a different okay now I generated these uh, these objects so these are for the 3g and so on there is also a tool that I'm not uh, that it's not exposed at the moment in the in the interface, but I can basically if you change this, I can uh, generate the matrix data and the instance data back from the objects. But that's not something that we uh, we want to use at the moment. Why I have this uh, tool to generate these objects? It is, for example, if I wanted if I wanted to generate light map data because you, you will be not able to generate light map data from instance geometry that's not rendered in, in Unity Editor. It's a specific code that's running in Execute uh, in Editor just to see the the painted, uh, painted data. So if I wanted to generate light maps for these trees and then render them in the game using a light map and, uh, and an instance the draw calls, I would need these uh, objects to be here like this just for the light map generation. So that's why why I did this uh, uh, this option there. So that's it, guys. I'm not sure when it will be uh, released uh, yet. I still need to go because the <laughs> during my programming uh, streak this weekend uh, and also playing Lost Ark, the, a lot of the code is like, okay, I was waiting uh, in a dungeon and I, I just had to put some code um, uh, into, into Unity. So it can be it can be done a bit better, uh, especially working with the, with the matrices. Uh, so there will be a lot of refactoring, but uh, I I'm hoping for a feedback uh, from our guys in Pixel Federation, but also from you guys if you are interested in in, uh, in such tool. And I, I will update it probably a bit more before I do the first release. And even let me know if you are actually interested in something like this, so it may it may affect my uh, my working uh, schedule next weekend, for example, and so on. So. Uh, that's all for today and I hope you like it and I hope I will hear from you. Thank you.